Hello everyone and welcome to the third of our videos on contestability. This video is all about barriers to contestability. So on this slide we've got five key barriers and if you think back to the assumptions that need to be in place for a market to be contestable you should be able to to start to understand why these are barriers. Um, so first of all, internal economies of scale. If there are significant internal economies of scale, then new entrant firms likely to be smaller in some cases will have quite a significant cost disadvantage. Um, the same would be true if there is vertical integration and the strength of customer brand loyalty will have an impact on how willing consumers are to switch from incumbent firms to the new entrants. It may be as well that some firms have control of important technologies and that there are very different levels of expertise and reputation. So let's start to have a look at some of these um, and in particular some of the cost advantages that an established business may benefit from. So if you look at this diagram here at output Q1, firm A, the firm in the market at the moment, has a really big cost advantage over its potential rival firm B. I'd like you to stop the video just for a couple of moments and see if you can come up with possible reasons for this. Well, possible reasons I've got. First of all, learning economies. If you're the firm in the market, then you are producing this good or service all the time. And the chances are that you are getting better and better because you are the one actually doing it. It may be there's been some vertical integration. It may be that you experience a lower customer churn and you might as well be able to use your monopsony power to achieve uh, better costs. On this slide, we're looking at economies of scale. And you can see the very different minimum efficient scales on the two diagrams. So on the left, minimum efficient scale is relatively low and there will be scope for lots of firms to be in this market and benefit from economies of scale to the full. On the right hand diagram, so this shows us a natural monopoly here and you can see that really there's only scope for one firm to be in this market. Minimum efficient scale is so high, um, but in, in any event, the larger firms in this market are going to have a big cost advantage over any smaller firms trying to enter. Sunk costs then, these can be another big barrier to contestability. These are costs that are not recovered if a firm leaves an industry. So when sunk costs are high, a market becomes far less contestable. They act as a barrier to entry because the firm knows they risk making significant losses if they decide to exit the sector. And the whole sort of idea between hit and run entry is that you come in when profits are abnormal, fully expecting actually that you may need to leave again when profits return to normal or below. Some markets though, fast food restaurants, sandwich bars, hairdressing, salons and so on, sunk costs really could be quite low. 
And even in industries like the airline industry, where it might seem that that's an industry with very high sunk costs, if you think instead about particular routes, you could take that plane and use it on a similar route to that. So sunk costs are not always high. You need to think very carefully about how the industry works. Got some core examples of sunk costs on here, which I will leave you to pause the video and have a read of. Global brands as well. So one of our assumptions for a um, contestable market is that there is not significant brand loyalty and of course not all brands are equal. So a thinking task for you, which do you think are the most valuable brands in the world today? And here we are. This is the most uh, up to date information on here. Brand value. And you can see there are massive differences on here. Brand loyalty will significantly decrease the contestability of a market. Here's another one. Willingness to change main supplier. So another thinking task for you. I'd like you to have a look at the chart and think about what this information suggests about the contestability of these markets. OK, well, again, we see a lot of difference here in terms of how willing consumers are to change their main supplier. And if a consumer is not willing to change, then the new entrant firms are going to have a very difficult time if they enter a market and its contestability will be greatly reduced. Um, the final slide in this section. Um, it's possible as well that the incumbent firms in a market, even if it starts out reasonably contestable, are actually able to do quite a lot to deter entry by their potential competitor firms and really reinforce their position. So it may be that you have a hostile takeover even of, of the firm that, that is the potential rival. They might be able to undertake a programme of product differentiation and possibly expand capacity so they can reap the benefits of lower unit costs and predatory pricing. So set prices um, perhaps in the short run so it is not worth or viable for a new entrant to come into the market. There we are. An end to our video on some of the barriers to contestability.